PLA Army's new amphibious uncrewed ground vehicle at Zhuhai Air Show. Chinese state-run defense and automotive conglomerate China South Industries Group Corporation unveiled a new amphibious uncrewed ground vehicle in the Zhuhai Air Show. The clips of what is simply described as an amphibious unmanned combat vehicle were included in a promotional montage, from China South Industries Group Corporation, CSGC, showing various vehicles and weapon systems, which emerged on social media today. However, rather than four wheels, CSGC's uncrewed vehicle has a quartet of triangle-shaped rubber band-style tracks. Tracks of this kind are widely available as conversion kits for SUVs, pickup trucks, all-terrain vehicles, and other vehicle types, and are intended to provide improved mobility on various kinds of softer terrain, such as sand and snow. The tracks could be particularly beneficial for helping CSGC's uncrewed amphibious combat vehicle get out of the water on a beach, something that even purpose-built wheeled amphibious vehicles sometimes have difficulties with. The company's promotional video also highlighted the design's mobility in snowy conditions. In the water, the uncrewed amphibious vehicle is powered at least primarily by a water jet-type propulsion system. It's unclear whether or not the tracks can be used to provide additional propulsion or to help with maneuvering, but the promotional video clearly shows that they are designed to be retracted up into a stowed position to improve the vehicle's overall hydrodynamics. There are slight differences overall between the vehicle seen actually in motion in the promotional montage and the one that was on display at Zhuhai Air Show. It is possible that the example at the air show was a mock-up meant to reflect a more production representative version. It's not entirely clear what actual operational capabilities CSGC might have envisioned for this uncrewed amphibious vehicle. The version at Zhuhai featured a small turret on top with a pair of what looked to be anti-tank guided missiles in individual launch tubes, as well as a sighting system that could include electro-optical and infrared cameras. An additional mast on the rear deck could hold other sensors, while the exact purpose of a separate outrigger-like protrusion on the left side of the hull is unclear. While the promotional montage does not appear to show weapons or sensor systems fitted to the vehicle, it does show cargo rack can also be installed on top. In addition, the People's Liberation Army, PLA, has been working to improve its amphibious capabilities overall and expand its overall capacity to conduct those kinds of operations in recent years, including with the commissioning of new large deck amphibious assault ships. The PLA has also garnered significant attention globally more recently with exercises demonstrating its ability to leverage commercial roll-on and roll-off ferries to provide additional amphibious capacity. The PLA certainly faces numerous potential flashpoints where amphibious landings would not only be a part of the overall operational picture, but would be central to their success, such as an intervention against Taiwan. Chinese forces could be ordered to seize control of various other islands in the Western Pacific, including in the hotly contested South China Sea, in the event of a major conflict in the region, too. In 2020, the Planck, People's Liberation Army Navy Marine Corps, continued to mature an enlarged force structure of eight brigades intended to be scalable and mobile, modernize its capabilities for joint expeditionary operations, including operations beyond the first island chain, and become more proficient in conventional and irregular warfare, according to the 2021 Pentagon Report on China's military. As the Pentagon Report highlighted, amphibious operations, especially those involving contested landings, present notorious risks for the attacker, both for ships launching those forces and those elements as they head to the beach. Adding a significant number of uncrewed combat vehicles, especially in the initial waves, could help reduce risks to crewed platforms and dismounted troops, while still providing useful additional firepower and sensor coverage, among other things. In later waves, these could be used to ferry cargo to established beachheads or might provide other kinds of support, such as acting as communications nodes or mobile electronic warfare systems. If CSGC's uncrewed amphibious combat vehicle is relatively low cost, it could make it even easier to field them in greater numbers and deploy them in riskier situations where there might be increased chances of them being destroyed. In this U.S. military, among others, the word attritable is often used to describe uncrewed systems that are designed to strike a balance between cost and capabilities, and are therefore can be more readily employed in higher threat environments that might otherwise preclude the use of a costlier, more exquisite platform. 
PLA remains to be seen, though it has clearly gone through a certain amount of development already. It certainly would not be hard to envision these and other uncrewed ground vehicles factoring heavily into future Chinese amphibious operations. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.